Hi, Training Morning Telsink here, and today our theme is broken, and we are speaking. Reta Kroner. Ha! <laughs> Come on, let's go in. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here to share my story. For the next 20 minutes, I hope to tell you a little bit about my experience, how addictions have affected my life, how alcoholism and drug addiction took everything from me, and how I recovered from it. To start my story, I could tell a little bit about my background. I'm from the family that my mom or my dad, they didn't really use alcohol much. They only had a glass of wine once in a while with meal, maybe. That was it. I never saw them drunk. I still have never seen them drunk. When I had my first zip of alcohol when I was 16. I was hanging out with my friends, spending a weekend with them, and we had a few bottles of cider. And we decided together that we're gonna drink them. And I noticed right away that I liked it. Before that, I had never really thought about alcohol that much. I was not one of those kids who were very interested in trying alcohol or smoking or drugs or anything like that. I was very ambitious. I was very good at school. I was quite shy. Alcohol was probably one of the least things in my mind. But like many other young people, I tried it. And right away I noticed that I really like this. This is for me. I thought that everyone feels like that when they have alcohol for the first time. Because I felt like I fell in love. For the first few years, my drinking was quite normal. I was mainly drinking with my friends once in a while. I wasn't necessarily very drunk when I was drinking, but I definitely liked it every time. I waited for the weekends that I could have a drink. And in 2011, I moved to New York. I had a lot of dreams, a lot of plans. I wanted to have a good career. I was planning to study in a college and then start my career after that. Maybe find a relationship, have a family at some point. Those were my dreams. Becoming an alcoholic or addict was not one of them. I thought I could not become an alcoholic. I didn't know anyone, any young people who would. I thought my idea of alcoholic or drug addict was that they were poor, they had made bad choices in their life, or they were just generally bad people. That's how I thought. And I was not like that. But quite soon I noticed that I started to drink more and more. I still liked it. It still made me feel good. I still felt social when I was drinking. I still felt alive. But I also started noticing that my life, when I was sober, it didn't feel like anything. I was bored. My life felt like it was gray or black if I didn't drink something. Or if I, in some point, when I started using drugs, if I didn't use drugs. I went to back to Finland for the summer vacation and I got a job. And on that summer, my drinking changed. I was biking back from my work, back to home, and I had an idea. I decided to stop at the store and get a couple of bottles of cider. There was nothing necessarily weird about that, except that when I went back home, I didn't tell anyone that I drank those ciders. 
I hid the bottles in my closet and didn't say anything. And after that, every time I drank, I felt ashamed. I felt disappointed at myself and I couldn't understand why. And after that point, also my addiction started to progress very rapidly. I noticed that I felt, when I was sober, I felt anxious. I was restless. I was depressed even. It didn't feel good, it didn't feel natural. I felt normal when I was drunk. And soon, during the next year from that, I started to drink every day. My personality started to change. I became angry. I was all the time, even if I was sober, I was angry. I couldn't focus on things. I couldn't focus on school anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't enjoy my life as I had enjoyed before. Only thing I could enjoy, only thing I could think was the drinking. When can I have my next drink? Where can I get it? Where do I hide it? Those were my thoughts. My whole life started to revolve around the drinking. And during that time, my um, boyfriend at the time, he also started to notice that there was something wrong. He started to say that maybe you shouldn't drink that much. Why are you always drunk? And I just denied the problem. I said, I am lonely. I'm in a different culture. I am, I am away from my family. I'm feeling depressed. I found all these excuses why I was drinking. But the drinking itself, it wasn't a problem for me. Even though I was drunk all the time, every day. But still, I couldn't see it. I was the last person who actually saw that there was not everything right with it. Then in 2013, I found myself in the situation that I had come home, back home. My parents were already extremely, extremely worried about me. They told me that I have two options. Either I will go to the treatment and get sober, or I will not go back to the US anymore to study and they will not let me live with them anymore, that they would kick me out. I chose drinking. It was my first priority, nothing else mattered anymore. It was like, the feeling of addiction is like hunger. Like when you are extremely hungry, you can't think of anything else except eating. That's how it is, it's not a want, it's a need. And that's how I felt. I had to have the drink. It was the only thing I could think of. And I couldn't get it out of my mind before I had the first zip. And for that few seconds when I had the first zip, it felt good. Then I started to think the next drink or drug use again. That's how my life was for the last year of my drinking and drug use. I started to use heavier and heavier drugs when I was here in Finland. It wasn't that, it was a coincidence that those people came in my life. I looked for them. I noticed alcohol didn't give me much anymore. I had to find something else. So I switched to heavier and heavier drugs to get the good feeling again, which I had once got from alcohol. But of course it didn't last and the anxiety was worse and worse all the time. It felt like I had a stone under my chest. That it didn't leave. It was there all the time and it was very heavy. It could go away for a few seconds or a few minutes while I was not sober, while I was high or while I was drunk. But it didn't really leave. And it became impossible for me to be sober anymore. During the last year of my drug use and drinking, I only had a few days when I was actually sober. My parents did me a great favor. They let me go. 
they didn't allow my behavior, they didn't make it possible for me to drink or use drugs with them, they didn't, they, they didn't want to be part of that life when I am destroying myself. And finally, I had lost everything. I, I lost my relationship. I lost my school place. I couldn't study anymore. I lost my home. I, I lost everything, basically. I lost myself, my family. All those things that before I thought were the most important things in my life. And in 2013, in November, there finally came the day when I was so tired. I was just laying on this apartment that I had for a while. It wasn't really a home, it was an apartment. There was people coming in and out, either using drugs there, coming there to bring me drugs, but they were not my friends. They were people that I hanged out with, that the only common thing that we had was the drug use. I was laying there on my apartment. I had a little mattress. It was really dirty. There was like a vomit and, and stuff like that on it. And I was too scared to move anywhere. I was so scared. I had some hallucinations. I was afraid that who comes in from the door. I was sleeping there with the knife next to my bed in case someone comes in. And in that point, I was so lonely that I realized that I need to get out. I can't live in this hell anymore. That I am ready to do anything that I can get out of this that I don't have to live this life anymore. I got very lucky. My dad had decided for the one last time to come and check whether I'm alive. After a week, I had been laying there on that mattress, he came. And I was so relieved because I knew that that time I could ask for help. For the first time in my life, I was ready to receive help for myself. And that's when I left the treatment. I was completely broken in that point. And in the treatment, my therapist helped me to see the reality. The reality that I had not seen while I was using drugs and drinking. They did not try to understand me, they just showed me the reality. They showed me the consequences of my addictions, because that's what I needed to see to recover. I understood that this was a disease, and it helped me a lot to also cope with everything. That I could understand that this is a disease and I can recover from it. That there is a recovery, and that's what I wanted. I was really ready to do anything to get out. And I also understood that the problems I had, the depression, the fact that I had lost my home, that I had lost my family, it wasn't that they made me to drink. It was that drinking and drug use has caused me those things happen to me. Like the depression, for example, after I recovered, I have not felt depressed or anxious like that for one day in my life anymore. I had to be completely honest. It was the only way, and that's where my healing started. There is not really a cure for this disease, but the recovery is possible. And I had to open all of those wounds again. I, I had to be able to be vulnerable. And I told all of those things in the treatment to that group. 
that I thought I would never tell anyone. I had done, done everything that I thought I would never do. Things like cheating are not part of my mor moral code, really. I don't think stealing is right, but I had th done all of those things. And I had treated my family extremely bad. The only thing I remember my dad told me, I had been in, in three weeks uh, in the treatment, and we had a family weekend. And during that weekend, my family had a chance to tell me how they have felt about my addiction. I remember sitting in the chair in the middle of the, um, of the room, and my mother came there first. She sat in front of me, and she was angry. She was more than angry. She was very disappointed. She was so worn out. And she just said to me, I wish you had died. She had wished it so many times that everything had just ended. And then my dad came there, sat in front of me, and the only thing he said was, break yourself. That's all he could say. He was so, he was so sad. And I knew in that point that that's what I needed to do. I needed to break the person I had become. It was not me. My family had not abandoned me. They had abandoned the addict. They still loved the person under the addict, but they couldn't see it anymore. And in order to me to recover, I needed to first break myself. After that, after everything I did in the treatment, after finding my honesty again, I felt like the rest of the recovery, being sober, was surprisingly easy. The need to use drugs, the need to drink, it vanished. I didn't have the stone under my chest anymore. I felt like I had the clean slate to start over again, to start healthier life. And now I can say that I really do love my life. I have been able to accept that the fact that I am always a drug addict, I'm always an alcoholic. But it doesn't have to define me for the rest of my life. I can still do things, and I now have courage to do things, and actually achieve those dreams and achieve those goals that I thought I would not have a chance to achieve anymore. It has been a second possibility to me in life. And I am definitely going to use it. I just got to know myself for the first half a year of my recovery. Only thing I did for the first half a year was that I just took care of myself. The one goal I had was to go in the group once a week and stay sober 24 hours at the time. And that's what I did. And I slowly started to found again who I was, what I liked, what I wanted from my life. And I did it by putting myself first, putting my recovery first. It's always the first thing. And after that comes my family, after that comes my school, my career, everything else. Because without my sobriety, I don't have any of those. But now I'm extremely happy to be here. It's, it was very nice to share my story. And I believe that if I was able to recover from that, anyone can recover also from addictions, 
or from similar things as I've been going through. It takes time, but it's worth it. I really love myself nowadays and it is great to say that my past doesn't affect my today anymore. It doesn't affect what I'm going to do in the future. I always remember who I am. I always remember my disease, but it's just, it just one thing. It's not the whole world to me anymore. Thank you for listening. It was great, great talking to you. Thank you.